Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So I am trying to film more often. I know I'm not succeeding very well, but I'm trying. Um, and uh, the last time I filmed, I think was doing the cooking video, but I think someone did ask me to do a video talking about my, my middle school years. So uh, I thought um, I, it's a snowy day here in Colorado and I finally just kind of feel like sitting here and talking to you guys. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and talk to you. Um, so first off, let me preface this by saying that I never went to middle school. <laughs> um, mainly because when I was going to school in Chicago back in the 70s and 80s, um, there were no such things as middle schools. Um, I know that Chicago has middle schools now because I actually taught at, um, I taught at Logandale Middle School in Chicago after I graduated from college in 95. But when I was going to, uh, to school in Chicago, there were no middle schools. I don't know if it's middle schools are a thing throughout the city now, or if it's just in certain places, because I know Logan, Logandale opened up as a middle school for the Avondale Elementary School. Um, so I honestly don't know how that all works, because I haven't been in Chicago for 20 years. So um, when I was going to school, it was K through eight, eighth grade, kindergarten through eighth grade for elementary, and then you went straight into ninth grade. Uh, through 12th grade for high school. And so that's how school worked in Chicago when I was going. So there really was no middle school. And I know middle school for most people, and, and I know in some places in the US it's junior high school, and in some places it's middle school. And it's generally 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, although I've heard in some places it's 7th, 8th, and 9th grade. So depending on what state you're in, it's like it's different everywhere else. So, but I'm I'm gonna go ahead and talk about when I was in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, mainly because I did a lot of transferring between schools to try and avoid bullies when I was a kid, because I was bullied really badly. And um, one of the um, one of the things is I ended up transferring uh, into this one elementary school uh, in sixth grade. And so for me, I guess it was sort of like going to middle school because I had gone through elementary school at Oscar Mayer Elementary. Uh, so for, for those of you in the US, um, Oscar Mayer obviously is a famous brand, but the man who created the company actually was, a, he, he formed the company Oscar Mayer in Chicago. I don't know if he was born in Chicago or if he was actually born in Germany, mm -hmm. um, but I know he's of German lineage, uh, but the Oscar Mayer brand came out of Chicago, and so they named an elementary school after him. So I actually started, well, actually, duh, back up, um, I actually started, I did kindergarten in Canada um, at Our Lady Fatima Catholic School um, in Coquitlam, British Columbia, outside of Vancouver. Um, I, I lived there for about nine months when I was about four years old. So I was there first. And then, so I actually ended up going to kindergarten when I was about four. And then I came back to the US and then my grandmother didn't send me to school until um, I was actually seven, almost eight by the time I started first grade. And I was actually a year behind because my grandmother forgot to send me. I was supposed to start the year before or something. I don't remember anymore, I was pretty little. But I actually didn't start because school started in first grade in September and I didn't start till mid-October. So there was a whole mess there. Uh, but anyway, so I was at Oscar Mayer um, from first grade through about third grade. Um, and I was bullied really badly. I mean, I was physically bullied. I was had groups of kids that would push me down and kick me and punch me and just, just it was it was really a bad situation. And so to get away from that, um, I ended up getting transferred to a small private Christian school. Um, and the reason I ended up there is because um, we were poor and it was the cheapest private school. I think it was only 35 a month where I think the other private schools were all 200 or 300 a month or something ridiculous. And, you know, we couldn't afford that, but um, we managed to scrape together. I think my mom was actually working at the time. And so we were, they were able to scrape together the 35 a month for this one little school. And I think I was the only kid in my grade. Um, I was actually in a small one room classroom <laughs> with kids from fourth grade, fifth, yeah, because I started there in fourth grade, so fourth, fifth, fourth and fifth grade, because so, I because I spent fourth and fifth grade in that school, but it was fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, and then they actually stopped at seventh grade, and they didn't have an eighth grade, so everyone there had to go to a public school for eighth grade. It was weird. Anywho, so I was there for fourth and fifth grade, and then, um, that was a nightmare. I didn't learn anything. It, it, it was just, it was a whole bunch of bad things. And then also the bullies 
that had been the worst of my bullies from Oscar Mayer followed me there um, to Pillar, it's the Pillar of Fire was the name of the, 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 cat, the Christian school and they actually followed me there and continued to harass me, which was horrible. Um, and, they were, and her parents let them. I don't know how that worked. I, anyway, um, so at the end of fifth grade, I was like, okay, I'm done with the school. I'm not learning anything. Um, we were praying more than anything else and then just memorizing a bunch of facts and not, like I said, we were not learning anything. And I, get, I got frustrated. So finally I transferred, and I couldn't transfer back to Oscar Mayer, even though I wanted to, um, just because of some stupid rule about transferring out and not transferring, I don't know. But they wouldn't let me transfer back to Oscar Mayer. Mm -hmm. So there was one other elementary school in my neighborhood that I, where I lived um, called Louis J. Agassiz, or just Agassiz Elementary. And so I ended up transferring into Agassiz Elementary for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So, Long story short, <laughs> so I ended up um, at Agassiz starting sixth grade, so that's kind of like my middle school years was, was that. And that was interesting because when I started sixth grade at Agassiz, they didn't have a sixth grade teacher. So they looked at my standardized test scores from when I was still Oscar Mayer. I didn't take any standardized tests um, when I was at Pillar of Fire because they just didn't do that. Like I said, I learned nothing um, other than when I went to the library. I used to go to the library and read a lot, so I taught myself for about two years, kind of, sort of, maybe. I don't know. Um, but so yeah, so sixth grade, they go and they looked at my, uh, my former standardized test scores um, and thought, well, she's pretty smart. So they were splitting up the sixth grade then between the fifth grade classroom in the seventh grade classroom and so they threw me into the seventh grade classroom based off of my third grade standardized test scores and I because I had spent two years just really not learning much of anything I was behind and so I struggled in that seventh grade classroom I they probably should have put me in the fifth grade one um, especially in math um, I was fine with the English the history science all that stuff those ones I was fine I think it was getting A's and B's and all that but the math I seriously struggled because they were introducing algebra at that stage um, and I just I, I look I'm like wait a minute you're, you're introducing the alphabet into math <laughs> wait what <laughs> to this day I still struggle with with um, higher mathematics and that kind of thing and um, Anyway, so that was a challenge for me. And then about midway through sixth grade, um, they finally hired a teacher. And so they took the, the, the sixth graders out of the fifth and seventh grade classrooms and put us all into a sixth grade classroom. Um, so that ultimately was okay, except for the fact that I don't know what this teacher's problem was, but she purposely picked out several kids that she decided she did not like, and she tried to fail us. Uh, which was a whole thing with her. I don't know what her problem was, but she literally tried to fail me in every subject. I mean, I had straight Fs, and I'd always been an A and B student, uh, except for um, math, where I was always a C student. Um, and I, I really never got past uh, C, uh, except for in high school in geometry, I got, I, I got Bs in that course. But anyway, otherwise, I'm, I w I'm a pretty solid C student in mathematics, but I'm usually a solid A and sometimes B student in pretty much every other subject. So, um, but she was failing me f across everything. And then the principal was like looking at the report cards and looking at the standardized test scores. And thankfully, uh, Mr. McCann was our, was our principal. He was a very on top uh, with it type of principal and he was paying attention to all the kids and everything and I actually I think it was either myself or my grandmother who brought it to his attention that hey something's going so, something's not right here and he did he sat down he looked at my report card compared it to my standardized test score that I took that year and I was um, on grade level for math and I was two grade levels above in pretty much everything else and so he was like, okay, yeah, you shouldn't be failing any of this. And so he actually sat me down and tested me himself. He put together an entire test, tested me, and I think there were a, a few other kids that were struggling with the same problem. And so I think he ended up retesting all the failing kids and found out that none of us should be failing everything. And there was a whole drama there. And um, I think um, the teacher, her name was Ms. Moy, um, and she had a, a nervous breakdown and took a year off and then by the time I came by the time I was in eighth grade she came back as a second grade teacher and 
ended up doing the whole thing again with a different principal because our principal retired and so she was doing this whole same crap again to the second grader she was teaching and uh, so I'll get to that more when I get to the eighth grade part but so anyway so that was that was sixth grade for me primarily I didn't have um, as much trouble with other kids and I, I still was teased I still was bullied to a degree but not as badly um, my bullies that had followed me they actually followed me to Agassiz as well and then they got themselves kicked out so <laughs> whoops um so though they were gone i again i still had kids who were teasing me and things but um i don't know i i did start making some friends and things weren't things just weren't as bad as they as they had been and so sixth grade was weird seventh grade i ended up with the same seventh grade teacher was um mr duggan um that i had for the first half of sixth sixth grade when they had a split up and so I had Mr. Duggan again, and he basically, he looked like Santa Claus. I mean, quite literally, I mean, he was a big, tall man um, with a big belly and a long white beard and these rosy, rosy cheeks that if he, if he laughed, I mean, he, I mean, he actually, he did play Santa Claus for Christmas um, at, um, I forget what, but it was some kind of a volunteer thing where he, he played Santa Claus and he was a very convincing Santa Claus. Um, and he, he was an interesting person. He always ate the same food for lunch every single day for the last, and he said he'd had the same lunch every day for the last 25 years or something. His wife always made him the same lunch, which was a half a sandwich or something, a half a banana, and I, I forget exactly, but I remember that part. And so he was, he was an interesting person. And I had a really good friend in seventh grade, um, her name was Erica, and she and I sat next to each other and we used to have staring contests with the teacher. I don't know why we did this, but we did have staring contests with Mr. Duggan. And he would sit there and he would start to blush. And you, you, if you can imagine this chubby, white bearded man with these little apple cheeks, and he's just blushing and I don't know, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and he was, he was a silly teacher in terms of like for punishment. If you, he, if he caught you with um, chewing gum in class, he'd make you stick it on, on the tip of your nose. And, um, and that kind of thing. So I don't know, but he was a fun teacher. Um, he loved art and uh, um, art, artistic things, and he helped encourage a bunch of us to enter art contests and things. And I ended up winning second place in in the regional art contest, which was really cool. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And I ended up also doing an advanced science class with the eighth grade teacher that year. And I continued that on uh, when I was in eighth grade as well. Uh, which was really, really awesome because science has always been a favorite subject of mine. And if I didn't struggle so much with mathematics, I probably would have gotten a degree in some scientific field. But it's the mathematics that always um, holds me back. And, and it's just, it's one of those things where I just struggle to wrap my brain around um, the concepts. So um, it's just, that's just, that's my biggest limitation when it comes to, uh, to, to that kind of activity, but I love science and if, as long as someone can explain scientific concepts to me without delving into the mathematics of it, then I usually have no problem understanding it. So I, I, it's one of the reasons why I ended up getting actually, um, teaching science, um, and teaching science at the, uh, elementary school level where you really don't delve into the mathematics at all. You kind of higher level. Uh, look at the at the scientific concepts and things and so uh, Just always has been a, a fascination of mine, and I do wish I could have studied um, science, but um, you know be that as it may But seventh grade was interesting and I did start making some friends and going over to their houses and watching uh, we'd, we'd watch MTV and uh, my one friend had an Atari so we'd play Frogger and Pac-Man and that kind of thing uh, on her on her Atari and stuff and I always wanted an Atari of my own but we couldn't afford one so it was it was nice that I had a friend of mine um, who who had one and we'd do sleepovers and and rent movies at Blockbuster you know remember Blockbuster uh, get the VHS tapes and, and rent movies and things and so um, I started having a more normal child childhood at that point where I was making friends and I was hanging out and even though I was still being teased to a degree um, it it's had started getting better um, and then eighth grade 
was, it was a really weird year because we went through about five different interim principals and in between the interim principals, um, cause no principal, they just didn't stick around. I don't know. I don't, I, I wasn't paying that close attention to everything was going on other than that Mr. McCann retired and then they just couldn't find a principal to take the position permanently. And in between, whenever one principal quit for whatever reason and before they could find another interim principal, um, our eighth grade teacher was the vice principal for the, for the school and so he would have to take on the principal duties in between time. So the, class, the eighth grade class, we had kind of had free reign of the school for a lot of the year we weren't I mean he still was pretty good at making sure we stayed on top of subjects and we were able to to pass all the, the, the coursework and everything that we needed to to graduate and get into high school but um, one of the things trying to keep us out of trouble is he had us uh, mentor um, kids from younger grades and I ended up mentoring a little girl uh, oddly enough in math <laughs> but it was second grade math and I could handle that um, and she had Ms. Moy for, for her teacher. And that's how I found out that Ms. Moy was up to her shenanigans again because I was going, okay, I had to sit down with this little girl and like, okay, uh, she was trying to learn multiplication tables and things. And so I was like, well, let me take a look at the work you've done already and see if I can figure out where you're, you know, making your mistakes and then show you, you know, how to fix those. And so I would go through her homework and she and, and she had like a big fat zero and F like everything was wrong was marked wrong and I and I went through and I actually used a calculator to double check everything. She had every single question right. She had 100%. She had straight A's on every one of the homework she showed me that were F's um, marked by the teacher. And I took that stack of stuff with the little girl. I marched down to um, the principal's office and I don't remember if it was an interim principal or if it was my my teacher Mr. Lee at the time who was vice principal, uh, interim, whatever. Uh, but either way, I, I brought it to whoever was the principal's attention and said, hey, this is not, this is not cool. I showed him the work, I showed him the, my, my recalculations and he was like, okay, yes, definitely need to fix this. Um, I think he called the mother in to talk to her about, about what was going on. And the mother was, um, Kind of horrified that this was happening but she was from a very traditional um, family she, they were hispanic and they were catholic and they were like you know taught to, to respect teachers and they panicked and they actually just pulled their daughter out of school and transferred her to another school because they were like okay we don't want to deal with this we don't want to press charges we just whatever so um i think Ms. moy ultimately ended up just getting transferred to another school because she had tenure and with the Chicago uh, public school system and the Chicago Teachers Union, it's almost impossible to fire a bad teacher. Uh, <laughs> it's just, um, that's yet a whole other thing. And it's one of the reasons why I'm glad I'm not a teacher anymore because it's the politics, don't get me started on the politics. But anyway, so that, that happened and I, and I felt part bad for that little girl because she ended up going through the same thing I had been going through. And, um, and things. And then the other big memorable thing I can remember, um, well, two. One is I had a huge crush on my, one of my classmates. Um, that was my, my first real crush on another human being. Um, and, and his name was uh, Anthony Carlos. And he was adorable. Um, he, he had, and, and he went by the nickname of Scooter. And he had um, um, was it hetero heterochromia, where he had a blue eye and a green eye. Um, which I thought was adorable. And I was a very silly girl. Um, oh, I, when I was in eighth grade and when, my, when the, 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 our teacher was in the classroom, if I was sitting next to a girl, we'd talk a lot and too much and get in trouble. And so he would, trans, he would have me change desks so I'd sit next to a boy. Well, none of the boys in the classroom really liked me and so we would fight a lot. Uh, so I was either talking or fighting and he got exasperated with me and he said, where can I put you where you won't disrupt the classroom? And I said, well, let me sit next to Anthony. He actually said this. I don't remember if I said it in private or if I said it in front of the whole class. I don't remember. And if I said it in front of the whole class, I have no idea where I got the balls for that. But, um, I don't remember. All I know is I told the teacher that I wanted to sit next to Anthony. 
he let me. He let me sit next to him. And Anthony was one of the few boys who was actually not mean to me. I don't think he, he had a crush on me or anything like that, but he was actually really nice to me. He never asked me out or anything. We, no, nothing ever happened, but I got to sit next to him and it was so adorable. And he was so sweet. He had a little uh, sister in kindergarten and every day after school, he'd wait for her to get out of kindergarten and, and, and he, she, she, she'd run and hug him. And I don't know, I just thought he was just, you know, such a sweet older brother. And, and it was really nice that he was, he was that sweet to his sister. And he loved baking, and so every now and again he'd like try a new cookie recipe or something, and he'd bring me one to try, and that was kind of sweet too. I mean, that's that was about as, as as romantic as anything ever got between the two of us. And and he was just he was just a sweet guy, and he he really, I mean, if he was with the other boys, he'd kind of stand in the background and just kind of like he wouldn't stop from teasing me but at the same time he didn't really join in that much either um, I, you know I would have been nice if he had stood up for me but I think he was afraid of becoming a target himself um, you know and this is you know inner city Chicago so at the same time you get it you know he had to be careful he had to make sure that he was safe so his sister was safe and just you know all these things and he ended up becoming um, a police officer from the last I heard from some um, old friends of mine from school and stuff. I, I, I've not kept, kept in touch with him whatsoever, and he's not on social media anywhere. Um, but I, I did find out that he actually became a police officer. So and that it, my memory of, of who he was um, in school, uh, the, it makes a lot of sense that he would have done that. So anyway, so that was, that was one thing. And then the other big memory I had from eighth grade was one time, because I always try to avoid recess at this point. I was what, I was 14 and I, I really had no interest in playing on the playground. So, but again, we were elementary school, so we had recess, you know, 14 year olds going on recess, like whatever. But um, I would just say, hey, can I, I asked the teachers, like, can I stay in the classroom and just read a book? Because that way I'm, because trying to, there was no place to sit outside, so I have to stand to read and I didn't like that. So, so I was allowed to stay in the classroom and one time the, the the boys, especially the ones that really didn't like me, um, instead of going out for recess, they all went to the bathroom and waited for the teacher to leave the classroom and then came in. Because um, the, the teacher would escort everyone out, come in and, and grab some paperwork and then go back and go, go down to the principal's office. And so, and they kind of knew that routine and so they waited until that happened. And then they came and they surrounded my desk where I was sitting uh, and reading and they started kicking the desk and calling me all sorts of names and just, you know, basically trying to wind me up. And they, they succeeded. But th the interesting thing is I never used swear words because uh, growing up in my household, it was like a big no-no. In fact, I remember getting a pretty good spanking for saying rats um, in a um, <laughs> derogatory manner. <laughs> so it, it didn't matter the word that you used, it was the context that you used it in was, was the, the lesson I learned in, in that from that from my grandmother but um so yeah i never swore and um i finally and and excuse my language going forward but i just want to illustrate when um when i they finally pushed me to a point where i just got so mad i was crying i was i was angry i was upset and i just told them to leave me the fuck alone Let's see warned you warned you about that and it was the first time i ever used the f word or an expletive uh, um, word of any kind. Um, and wow, their jaws dropped to the ground. They were like, whoa, we really upset her. And they left and they never bothered me the rest of the year. I mean, I think this was probably like, because uh, we graduated in June, I think this was probably like February or March. So it was near the end of the school year anyway, but still they left me alone the rest of the school year. And I learned then that especially if you don't swear a lot, the power of then using that language when you do get upset, when you do mean it, um, had. And I used that to great effect in high school, <laughs> believe it or not. So, uh, um, yeah, that was that was pretty much my, my middle school experience, you know, with all the other caveats and everything else going on there, so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed um, this uh, little story time that I that I uh, you know and, and and I hope this fulfills the the request that the the person gave me. So, thank you for asking, and uh, I'm 
more than happy to uh, fulfill uh, any other requests in terms of, of things you'd like me to talk about. So, um, or ask me questions below. I, I love uh, conversing in the comments as well. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>